Amen. The Old Testament prophets had a love-hate relationship with their Hebrew nation and the kings that ruled over them. Almost all the prophets, Ezekiel to Isaiah to Amos and Micah to Hosea to Zechariah, almost all of them would come down hard on their country when it neglected the poor and practiced injustice. And so in this passage we are about to hear today, it's the prophet Jeremiah's turn. He has the unenviable task of telling the Hebrew people what they are doing wrong. So let us listen for the word of God to see how it might speak to us. For this is God's word to each of us today. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? For behold, their ears are closed, and they cannot listen. Behold, the word of the Lord is to them an object of scorn. They take no pleasure in it. Therefore, I am full of the wrath of the Lord. I am weary of holding it in. Pour it out upon the children in the street, upon the gathering of young men. Also, both husband and wife shall be taken, and the very old, old folk and the very aged. Their houses shall be turned over to others, their fields and their wives together. For I will stretch out my hand against the inhabitants of the land, says the Lord. For from the least to the greatest of them, everyone is greedy for unjust gain. From prophet to priest, everyone deals falsely. They have healed the wound of my people lightly, saying, Peace, peace, when there is no peace. Were they ashamed when they committed an abomination? No, they were not at all ashamed. They did not even know how to blush. Therefore they shall fall among those who fall at the time that I punish them. They shall be overthrown. Thus says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Good and powerful God to hear words of judgment runs crosswise with what we often hope to hear. We are seeking affirmation and blessing in the gift of peace. And yet sometimes, Lord, you let us know that the only way to the peace we seek is through the admission of wrongdoing. And so I pray, O oh Lord, that in the words I speak and in the words we hear, is something more like your Holy Spirit, which draws us closer to you, no matter how difficult the path. This we ask in Jesus' name, and all God's people said. So there are two hunters who were walking through some woods when they happened upon this hole in the ground. Well, they looked in this hole, and it was really dark. They couldn't see the bottom. So they were kind of curious. Each of them took a rock, threw it in the hole, you know, to see if they could hear when it hit the bottom. They didn't hear anything. So they looked around, they found a bigger rock. They rolled it over and put it down the hole, and they listened. Nothing. So now they're really getting curious. One of them happens to look around and spies a railroad tie. So the two fellows, they get that railroad tie, they haul it over, drop it down the hole, and listen. Nothing. But just about that time they see this goat flying out of the woods, shooting down the hole. They still don't hear anything. But what they do hear is this farmer who comes meandering up and says, excuse me there fellas, did you happen to see a goat around here anywhere? And the two hunters says, well I, I think it just went down that hole right there. And the farmer says, oh no, that's not possible. I had my goat tied to a railroad tie. <laughs> Oops. 
Admitting when we've made a mistake is not something most of us want to do. It's like the man who told me about this big argument he had with his wife. He swore he was absolutely right. In fact, he said he was so right, so adamantly, that when he discovered that he was wrong, he decided then and there that he was going to wait till he got to heaven before he told his wife she was right and he was wrong after all. Well, in the sixth chapter of Jeremiah, the prophet is telling the people about what they're doing wrong. And of course, they don't want to hear it. I have this image of a child, you know, when they like close their eyes and hold their ears and go la 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 just so they can't hear what they're being told. Well, that's what it seemed like the people of Jeremiah were doing. Closing their eyes, holding their ears, saying la 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 so as to drown out the sound of Jeremiah and the God who sent them. They had become morally corrupt and ethically lazy. And so in chapter 5, the chapter just before this, God tells Jeremiah to warn the people. Tell them their riches have made them fat. Their idolatry has confused right and wrong. Their selfishness ignores the pain of orphans. And they don't bother anymore to defend the rights of the needy. And what's more, they have no shame about it. They're so blissfully unaware of the struggles of the poor that they don't even blush about it when it's brought to their attention. The people don't want to hear about anything which is going to make them feel bad. And so you know what they do? They do what a lot of people still do. They go church shopping until they can find a priest who will make them feel good about themselves. It wasn't as hard then as it isn't that hard right now to find those who preach a message short on responsibility and long on denial. And so in verse 14, God says, these priests they have chosen have healed the wound of my people lightly. Another word here is falsely. These priests have healed the wounds of my people falsely, saying, peace, peace, don't worry about all this stuff when there is no peace. And in the end, Israel refused to admit their sins and the nation fell victim to the Babylonians in 587 BC just as Jeremiah had warned. The wives, the children, the old men all taken away from their homes. Now it seems to me that there's something like that kind of denial going on in our country today. I think the more we become aware that racism exists, still exists, sometimes we don't want to hear anything about it. We want to close our eyes, hold our ears, and go la 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 until we don't hear it anymore. We want to drown out any suggestion that things aren't peaceful. And just the suggestion that we may hold some responsibility for this can make us angry or defensive. We only want to hear about peace, 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 that everything is okay when there is good reason to believe things are not all that peaceful for people of color. So the phrase of becoming woke started a couple years or so ago. 
And it suggests that those of us who are white have been so unaware of the struggles of those who are black that we may as well have been asleep. And as we do become more aware of the persistence of racism, it is like waking up and hearing what black people have been trying to say to us for some time, that racism didn't end in 1964 with the Civil Rights Act. It's still going on. Now, up on the screen is four-star general Mark Milley, who was chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Looks like a rather stern fellow. But he became a hero to me last June when he appeared before Congress. It all started when uh, some folks discovered that there were two elective courses taught at West Point. One course dealt with gender issues, the other course dealt with race race relationships. Now some folks got all bent out of shape about these courses and they accused the general of pushing a progressive agenda. Now the angry noise was so great that the fact that the courses were electives and not required courses was lost on them. It would be like accusing Purdue University of becoming a cult of witches because they offered elective courses on making straw brooms. But specifically, they accused Chairman Milley of becoming woke. Now, to his credit, Milley didn't apologize for the classes. He said it's a responsibility of our military institutions to teach officers how to think critically and develop the ability to analyze complex issues. And we live in a time with all kinds of ideology, and so we want our officers to grasp what those ideologies are. I admired him for that. We don't want to embrace ignorance as a red badge of courage. Knowledge is power. And if becoming woke simply means being aware that our culture has a history of unfairness towards people of color, I think that's a good thing to do. But what we can deduce from the reaction we see is that some people don't believe that is true, that racism still exists. And any efforts to educate them on these facts are offensive. I read about this law being advanced in the Florida legislature. It would prevent school educators from teaching about slavery if it might make white students feel discomfort for historical wrongs. Something is off when there is fear of teaching history. of the pillars of our faith. One of those, of course, is to love others as we would want to be loved. And one of the best ways to love others is simply to become aware of the struggles they have to face, historical or otherwise. So, for example, today is Juneteenth. I didn't know the significance of this day until about three years or so ago. And so if that means I became woke, I am proud that I know something now that I didn't know then. But here is the history. On this date, June 19, 1865, Union troops entered the rebel state of Texas. Specifically, they entered Galveston, Texas. General Gordon Granger announced to the whole city, slave and free, that the Civil War was over. And they didn't know it. It had been over two months since Robert E. Lee had surrendered at Appomattox on April 12th, but no one had bothered to tell them. And what's more, the slaves didn't know about the Emancipation Proclamation. They didn't know that two and a half years earlier, Abraham Lincoln had signed the executive order freeing all slaves in rebel states as of January 1st, 1863. 
So these slaves, they've been free, legally free for over two years, but they didn't know it. And then on June 19th, 1865, they found out. Now, no doubt there are other places in the United States back then where some slaves didn't know about this freedom. But June 10th, June 19th, became the date when the hidden reality of emancipation was finally revealed to the better part of the remaining states. And so today, we remember Juneteenth as the day slaves woke to their freedom. But we also remember Juneteenth because true freedom is still a hidden experience for some who are black. They're still waiting for the full realization of what that means. Because today a black person is 17 times more likely to be found guilty of a crime and receive a prison term for the same crime as that committed by a white person. 17 times more likely to get a prison term. Today a black person is two and a half times more likely to be killed by police. Today, those in poverty, 19.5% are black compared to only 8.4% of those who are white. And today, probably the most significant statistic in my mind is somewhere over 90%, 90% of all positions of power in our country are held by those who are white. And what I mean by this is that 90% of those who own Fortune 500 companies, those in Congress, those who own teams, professional sports, the NBA, the NFL, those who own Amazon, those who own Google, those who run all the major television and cable networks, 90% of them are white. Now this doesn't mean that white people are racist. Let me state that clearly because some people mishear that. This doesn't mean that white people are racist. However, what it means is that we who are white ought to be aware of how consciously and unconsciously it, it affects us, the fact that 90%, that we hold 90% of all positions of power in our country that that has some effect. In my mind, this idea of becoming woke is nothing more than an act of empathy. We accept the fact that life is different for a black person than it is for a white person. And there is no shame in learning what those differences might be. The only shame might come is when we say peace, peace, when there really isn't a peace. It's a shame when we have those in our country, priests and otherwise, who want to heal the people lightly so that they don't feel anything bad about their responsibilities. But whether it's between races or genders, between a husband and a wife, it is an act of love to learn how life is for that other person. It's a good thing to become woke about other people, to, regardless of race, regardless of position. It is an act of love to learn how life is for a person other than ourselves. So let us at least try to do that. To God be the glory forever and ever. Amen.